Hello and good afternoon friends welcome to this ECA Reset live lecture dear friends in this session today we would be talking on uh, gene, uh, gene mutations under the series uh, genetics and for this discussion we have once again with us in our studios Dr. Varunendra Singh Rawat. Dr. Varunendra Singh Rawat is assistant professor in department of uh, zoology uh, Hindu College University of Delhi. So dear friends let's welcome our guest Dr. Varunendra Singh Rawat and let's try to grab a maximum knowledge on the topic uh, gene mutations. Hello Thank sir you. welcome to the visit lecture. Thank you. So friends, today I'll be talking about a very important aspect of genetics that is mutations. Mutations could either be chromosomal or, uh, or gene mutation that is uh, mutation at molecular level. Chromosomal mutations are basically aberration in the structure or the number of chromosomes. So today I'll be covering uh, on gene mutations and the outline for this topic would be uh, the classification of various types of mutations uh, which occur in various organisms. So what exactly is a mutation? It is any heritable change in the genotype which is caused by change in the sequence of nucleotide residue. And mutation could uh, alter the non-coding sequence also but it cannot be uh, detected phenotypically because it is a non-coding sequence it can be detected only by uh, methods like DNA uh, by molecular techniques like uh, DNA polymorphism etc. If there are uh, changes in coding sequences or regulatory sequences then the effects of mutations could be drastic. Now, mutation could also uh, cause chemical alteration in the DNA and thus preventing its use as a template for replication as well as transcription. And if information is passed uh, uh, with perfect fidelity in any organism then there is no scope for evolution but if mutation occurs and there is change in the sequence of the, uh, of the DNA then uh, there is chance of evolution occurring in the organism. So mutation is the raw material for evolution to occur. A mutation could be classified in a variety of ways and some of the ways in which uh, it is uh, classified is basically type uh, on uh, based on the origin of mutation, the cell type uh, where uh, mutation is occurring, the expression level uh, of uh, the gene, the effect on the function of the gene, molecular changes which occur uh, during mutations and effect on translation. Uh, what exactly uh, what exact what exact changes occur in translation because of a particular mutation these are the ways in which mutation has been classified uh, on the basis of origin mutation could be classified as spontaneous uh, mutation or induced mutation spontaneous mutations are those mutations which occur spontaneously in the body of the organism and they occur in the absence of any known mutagen the rate of uh, spontaneous mutation is about 2 to uh, 2 to 12 into 10 to the power minus 6 mutations per gamete per gene which is a very uh, small, a very uh, small uh, rate and induced mutations are basically caused due to exposure to uh, chemicals or radiations uh, and uh, there, there is another, uh, another way which in which spontaneous mutation can occur and that is insertion of transposone in the genome of the organism and jumping of transposone from one region to another region. This also leads to mutation. The first induced mutations were created by treating drosophila with x-rays. Now on the basis of cell type mutation could be occurring in somatic cells or they could be occurring in germinal cells. If the mutations are occurring in somatic cells then uh, the mutation die with the organism. They are not passed on from one generation to next generation. But if the mutation occur in germinal cells then they are passed from one generation to next generation. Now somatic mutation will yield an organism which is a mixture of normal and mutant tissue because only the cells which are having the mutant gene and their progeny will be having those, uh, that particular mutation. The rest of the organism would be wild type or normal. Now, mutant cells can only be identified by, only, uh, by the eye if the phenotype is uh, distinct and it contrasts visually with the surrounding wild type uh, cells phenotype. Now in diploid the dominant mutation is expected to show up in the phenotype of the cell or clone of cells containing it but recessive mutation would require that the individual become homozygous before the particular phenotype is observed. And this would be a rare case because uh, similar type of mutation occurring at the same locus uh, would, uh, is a very rare occurrence in any organism. Now early if, if the mutation occurs in the early period of growth of the organism then a significant proportion of the cell type which are derived from that particular cell would be having that particular uh, mutation. So uh, the sector which is containing the mutant phenotype will be larger if the mutant arises earlier during the development but if it arises late then smaller number of cells would be having that particular mutation. 
a somatic mutation cannot be transmitted from the parent to the progeny but in higher plants this can be done by vegetative means by grafting and rooting of the stem cutting which are containing the, uh, the specific somatic mutation. Now the germ line is a special tissue which gives rise to sick cells and if mutation occur in these particular cells and if the, if the mutant gamete is taking part in fertilization then uh, this particular mutation would be passed down from one generation to the next generation. An individual with normal phenotype and ancestry can harbor mutant sex cells as was the case with the Queen Victoria who is supposed to be the progenitor of the mutation hemophilia uh, which, is, uh, which is the common uh, uh, disease uh, found in the royal family of the Europe. It is su suggested that either Victoria or her parent had uh, the mutation in their gametes which led to hemophilia in various members of the European family. Now the experimental detection of germinal mutation depends on the ability to rule out meiotic segregation and recombination as possible causes of phenotypic differences between parents and offspring. So if we want to, uh, want to ascertain that the mutation is the cause of the phenotypic change then we have to make sure that it is not because of any segregation or recombination event which occur during meiosis. On the basis of expression the mutation could be classified as conditional mutations. Uh, which, uh, which, can be, uh, uh, which can be expressed under restrictive as well as permissive condition. If a phenotype is expressed under one set of environmental condition then uh, it is known as restrictive condition but if it is not expressed in another type of condition which is known as permissive condition then that type of mutation is known as conditional mutation. Whereas a non-conditional mutation, unconditional mutation will uh, express in all types of uh, condition. For example, in conditional mutation, a temperature sensitive mutation uh, whose expression depends on the temperature of the uh, individual's body is type of conditional mutation. Uh, usually the restrictive temperature is high uh, in Drosophila and the, this particular organism exhibits mutant phenotype above uh, this particular critical temperature and the permissive temperature is about 18 degrees centigrade and under these conditions the phenotype is wild type. The proteins containing amino acid replacement are often temperature sensitive and are unstable and denature under restrictive condition. For example, in Siamese cat, an enzyme required for synthesis of melanin does not function in the body but is functional in the extremities which are having lower temperature than the body. So at higher temperature the enzyme is not functional and there is no deposition of melanin in case of Siamese cat. As can be seen in this particular figure that this particular cat has black extremities, black face, black ears black tail and the uh, paws because of a lower body temperature whereas the body is uh, not having a dark, uh, uh, dark color because of no melanin deposition. Now unconditional mutations are those which are expressed under permissive as well as restrictive condition that is under all the condition they are getting expressed. On the basis of effect on function, the mutation could be classified as loss of function mutation which result from the complete gene inactivation or in a completely non-functional gene product. This occurs because of deletion of a part of a gene or an amino acid replacement which causes inactivation of the protein. These mutations are also known as null mutations or knockout mutations. Now Muller had termed these mutations as amorphic mutations. Another uh, type of mutation based on the function is hypomorphic mutations which reduces but does not eliminate the expression of the gene and uh, basically decreases the activity of the gene product. It results because of nucleotide substitution uh, which prevents a protein from being produced at a very uh, at a high level or normal level or from an amino acid replacement which reduces the activity of the protein and it is sometimes referred to as leaky mutation. Hypermorphic mutations are those mutations which produce a greater than normal level of gene expression in the individual because the mutation changes the regulation of the gene so that the gene is expressed, uh, uh, expressed at a very high level and the gene product is overproduced. Sometimes an amino acid replacement may increase uh, the activity of enzyme or protein and this might also lead to hypermorphic mutations. Another, uh, another uh, category is gain of function mutation which is basically alteration in the action of gene qualitatively. It may cause a gene to become active in a type of cell or tissue in which gene is not normally active. It may result in the expression of a gene and development at a time during which the wild type gene is not normally expressed. So these are gain of function mutation and uh, Muller's term for this, uh, these mutations was neomorphic mutations. 
Another is ectopic expression is basically expression of wild type gene in an abnormal location. For example, in uh, Drosophila it is seen that the gene ILS uh, can be expressed apart from eyes in the, uh, in the, in the part uh, of the body like legs or mouth part. So this is ectopic expression that means normal, uh, normal place of expression is not occurring here. The gene is getting expressed at abnormal tissues. Now on the basis of effect on molecular chain mutations can be classified as a deletion insertion and this could result in change at the molecular level or at chromosomal, re, uh, re, uh, re, uh, chromosomal level. So on the basis of effect of um, on molecular chain, uh, mutations could be classified as nucleotide substitution where, uh, wherein uh, a nucleotide pair in DNA duplex is replaced with another pair and this is the simplest type of mutation. For example, in A to G substitution, A is replaced with G in one of the strands. This creates a temporarily uh, mismatched GT base pair. At the next replication, G will pair with C. So basically, there is a change from AT base pair to, uh, to GC base pair. In an A to T substitution, an A is replaced by a T in one strand creating a temporary TT mismatch. After uh, replication, it is changed to TA in one daughter strand and AT in another. Both are not same because the DNA, uh, DNA strands are read in opposite direction. So some nucleotide substitution replace one pyrimidine base with other pyrimidine or one purine base with other purine and this is known as transition mutation. And the possible transition mutation are T to C or C to T and A to G or G to A. There are four possible transition mutations. Whereas some nucleotide substitution replace one pyrimidine based with purine or a purine with the pyrimidine. So these are known as transversion mutations. So these transversion mutations are possibly, uh, there are eight possibilities T to A, T to G, C to A or C to G that is pyrimidine to purine or A to T, A to C, G to T or G to C that is purine to pyrimidine. So there are basically four possible combination of transversion mutations which, which lead to molecular uh, level change in the gene. Now in human genome, the ratio of transition to transversion is approximately 2 to 1. There are more transition as compared to transversion. Because in most transition mutation, the third codon, the posi third position of the codon where pyrimidine replaces the other pyrimidine or purine replaces the other purine, the encoded amino acid in the protein is not usually altered. Such mutations which change the nucleotide sequence without altering the amino acid sequence are termed as synonymous mutations or silent mutation because the functionality of the protein is not changed. This uh, panel shows uh, that GA has mutated to GAG in the second codon, but the product which is formed is glutamine in both the case. So there is no effect on the uh, uh, amino acid sequence and the protein functionality. Now, uh, on the basis of effect on translation in non-coding regions like regulatory regions and the DNA between genes, the exact nucleotide sequence is not important. So uh, mutation can occur frequently at these positions and there will, there will not be any uh, detectable effect on the phenotype. Now, most nucleotide substitution in coding regions result in change in the amino acid and are called missense or non-synonymous non mutations. A change in the amino acid sequence can change the biological properties of the protein because protein, uh, protein folding, protein functionality is depend, dependent on the amino acid sequence and its folding. If an amino acid changes, then the functionality of protein might change. Example, in sickle cell mutation where exist AT where there exists an AT to TA transversion in the second codon position for the sixth amino acid, leading to formation of glutamic acid, which is uh, uh, leading to uh, formation of valine. Uh, and the normal uh, amino acid is glutamic acid. So in this particular case, the red blood cells have, red blood cells have the hemoglobin, which forms needle shaped crystals and the RBC becomes sickle cell in shape. So this is a uh, panel shows how missense mutation can lead to incorporation of the incorrect amino acid, which may produce a malfunctioning protein. Now if a mutation causes the replacement of one amino acid with the other, then the replacement with similar amino acid will have lesser effect on the function of the protein because the role of amino acid in the structure and folding of the protein is very important and it is also important for the functionality of the protein. Sometimes the mutation creates a uh, no, stop codon in the coding region of the gene and this particular type of mutation is called as nonsense mutation because it causes the premature termination of the translation and the complete polypeptide is not formed and the polypeptide fragment which is formed is non-functional. This panel shows how, uh, how a mutation can lead to formation of uh, a stop codon. A uh, GAG codon is mutated to UAG and UAG uh, codifies for stop codon and the protein translation st stops at this particular point. So this is a type of nonsense mutation. 
Now another uh, another uh, aspect is insertion of deletion of nucle nucleotide can also uh, cause a change in the uh, change in the uh, change in the sequence of the DNA, but it occurs at a lower rate than that of the nucleotide substitution. Most insertion and deletion in the mammalian genomes are small, but some are large enough to eliminate entire gene or a part of chromosome. With a coding region, uh, the insertion of deletion of exactly three nucleotide result in addition or elimination of one amino acid from the encoded polypeptide chain. But if uh, the uh, insertion or deletion is not in exact multiple of three, then it will lead to change in the reading of the uh, nucleotide sequence and this will cause a shifting of the reading frame which is known as frame shift mutation. And uh, because they change the reading frame of the codon in the mRNA. And if the mutation is not towards the carboxyl terminus of the protein, then it will result in formation of non-functional protein. So this panel shows how a, a frame shift occurs that uh, the codon are read in multiple of threes and because of deletion or addition, the fra uh, sh frame has shifted, the reading frame has shifted. Now new amino acid will be formed in place of the original amino acid and the function of the protein might get changed or it might become non-functional totally. Now, uh, there are some mutations which are known as dynamic mutations because of the genetic instability of the regions of DNA uh, involved in these mutations. And these usually occur in uh, regions which are having trinucleotide repeats and some genes are having uh, a number of trinucleotide repeats. And because of this particular mutation, the number of trinucleotide repeat might increase from one generation to gener uh, next generation, a phenomenon known as uh, genetic anticip anticipation. And this can lead to various types of disorders like fragile X syndrome, Huntington disease, etc. This particular expansion occurs because of replication slippage. And now uh, there are other type of mutation which are caused, uh, which are caused by transposable elements and uh, these mutations are uh, basically uh, caused by elements which can jump from one position to another and uh, this leads to uh, interrupting of the coding sequence of a gene. And uh, this particular sequence, uh, uh, if inserted in the coding region of the, the gene, it will lead to formation of a malfunctioning protein. And if it is in the non-coding re uh, region, then the, there won't be much of the effect. So transposable, transposable elements can also lead to change in the coding region and formation of malfunctioning product. So this is also a sort of type of mutation. Thank you. Today I'll be talking about a very important uh, aspect of genetics that is mutation and I'll be focusing on gene mutation. Gene mutation are basically change in the uh, DNA at the molecular level which leads to change in the genetic information and because of this change in genetic information, the product which are formed, the protein product are uh, formed which are non-functional and this particular mutation could also get transmitted from one generation to next generation. Uh, if the mutation are occurring in the somatic tissue, then they won't be transferred from the parents to the offspring. But if the mutation are occurring in the germinal cell, then they will be transferred. And this can have deleterious effects on the organism. So what exactly uh, uh, is the uh, gene mutation at molecular level, how it functions, I will be discussing about that. And the ob outline for today's lecture would be a basic uh, description of what exactly mutation is and uh, how spontaneous mutation can occur because of tautomerization, deamination, oxidation, alkylation and how mutagenic agents like base analogs, intercalating agents or rays, uh, UV rays can lead to formation of, uh, formation of bases which are not natural and can lead to mutation. Also I will be talking about how the mutations can be detected and a small uh, description of the site directed mutagenesis, how we can induce Mutation, uh, mutation at specific region and uh, in the specific genes and analyze how that particular mutation is changing the phenotype and a small description of knockout mutation, how knockout mutations are created and what effect they have. So the learning objectives for the today's lecture would be that after this lecture we should be able to tell about a various mechanism by which molecular mutation occurs in the individuals. 
So, uh, describing mutation, what exactly mutation is? Mutation is an any heritable change in genotype which is caused by alteration in the sequence of nucleotide uh, residues of the DNA. So, the basic criteria for, uh, for any change uh, to be described as mutation is that there should be an alteration in the nucleotide sequence and this uh, particular change will be termed as mutation. Now, the mutation could be uh, in the germline cells or somatic cells as described earlier. If the, germ, uh, the mutation is in germline cell, then the uh, progeny will also have that particular mutation. But if it is in the somatic cell, then only that individual will be having that uh, mutation and the phenotypic effects and it, uh, that particular mutation would die with the individual. Now, if a mutation occurs in any individual, then accurate information is not transferred for either from uh, the cell type to its uh, progeny uh, in the tissue or from the, uh, from the organism, from the parents to its offspring. Now, uh, this occurs because of uh, mutation altering the coding sequences or regulatory sequence. If mutations occur in the sequences which are not coding for any protein, then there won't be any issue. But if mutation alter the coding sequence which are coding for proteins or the regulatory sequences which are responsible for regulation of gene expression, then this will uh, lead to serious consequences. And mutation basically are uh, causing alteration in DNA and uh, they are basically causing chemical alteration in DNA so that the uh, DNA strand where mutation is occurring, it cannot be used for replication or transcription. So, these are the various mechanisms by which uh, mutation causes a disruption of transfer of genetic information. Now, mutation could lead to misincorporation and damage of the single bases, which, uh, which case, uh, in which case it is termed as point mutation. Only single bases are affected or it can, it can lead to a damage of a short stretch of nucleotides or it could lead to a damage to a long stretch of DNA like chromosomal deletion. This uh, chromosomal deletion comes under the third category. Now, cells have a spontaneous mutation rate which reflects the uh, fidelity of DNA replication and efficiency of DNA repair. The spontaneous mutation rate is basically is determined by how much, uh, how much, uh, with how much fidelity the DNA is replicating and with how much efficiency the DNA repair mechanism is functioning in the cell. The fidelity of DNA replication, uh, replication is basically, uh, basically dependent on the base selection by DNA polymerase. It always, uh, in, uh, at, uh, in most of the cases, it selects the right base during replication. And secondly, there is proofreading exonuclease activity in the DNA polymerase. If a wrong base is selected, then the exonuclease activity of the DNA polymerase will help in excision of the wrong base, which has uh, gotten incorporated in, in the strand which is getting extended. And third is activity of accessory proteins which stabilize the replication complex. All these uh, three factors help in, uh, help in having the, help in, uh, the replication to be a very high fidelity mechanism. And these mechanisms basically reduce the error frequency to one misincorporation in every 10 is to power 10, 7 base pair incorporated. Otherwise, the error frequency would have been very high. Now, even after all these, all these uh, mechanisms exist, uh, which exist to ensure that uh, there is high fidelity in replication, uh, there, is, uh, there is damage to DNA and there is mutation occurring because of spontaneous changes which, are, which occur in DNA. Now, uh, a very surprising change which occurs in DNA is occurring because of the uh, molecules of water and this is basically tautomeric shift. Though water is required for maintaining the uh, double helical structure of the DNA, still the water molecules might cause change in the uh, change in the individual bases and they might exist in more than one form and this, uh, this occurring of uh, transient, uh, transient uh, forms is known as uh, tautomeric shift and this occurs because of the shifting of the hydrogen atoms on the bases. And the isomers which are thus formed are known as tautomers. Now, this particular panel shows how uh, tautomers can be formed as can be seen that uh, the thymine exists in a uh, common keto form, but because of shifting of the hydrogen in the bases, it can also occur in enol form which occurs rarely in the DNA. Secondly, uh, the adenine can occur either in amino form in which there is NH2 group attached to the carbon uh, 6, whereas it can also occur in amino form where, where the carbon 6 is having NH group. Similarly, cytosine can also occur in amino form or immunoform. 
Immuno form is rarer as compared to amino form and guanine can occur in keto form or enol form wherein enol form is rarer as compared to ketone, uh, ketone form of the guanine. So if these particular tautomers are present then this would change the uh, base pairing ability of these bases and this will lead to mutation. Tautomers do pair with other bases but uh, they do not obey the Shargaff's rule which is A always t uh, pairs with T and G always pairs with C. So the rare, uh, rare forms, rare tautomeric forms will pair with some other bases as compared to the normal bases which, uh, which follows Shargaff's rule. So the, this panel shows that uh, if uh, thymine is present in enol form which is a rare tautomeric form then it can base pair with guanine whereas in the normal keto form it would be base pairing with adenine. Similarly cytosine in its rare amino form will be pairing with adenine whereas in normal condition it should pair with guanine. Thymine in its keto form will be pairing with uh, guanine uh, which is present in enol form which is the rare form of guanine and cytosine which is amino form which is the normal form for cytosine is pairing with adenine in its amino form which is the rare form for adenine. So adenine in amino form should be pairing with thymine but in its amino form it is pairing with cytosine whereas guanine in its keto form should be pairing with cytosine whereas in its enol form it will be pairing with thymine. So if this particular type of changes occur because of occurrence of tautomers then we can well predict that if uh, at a particular position uh, thymine is present in its enol form then during replication it should incorporate adenine at the opposing strand but when it when it is presenting uh, when it is present in the rare form enol form it will be incorporating guanine and during the next round of replication this particular guanine will be incorporating cytosine in the opposing strand so basically there is there is a change from ta base pair to gc base pair and in this particular manner mutation has occurred because of presence of tautomers in the dna so this particular panel shows how uh, how occurrence of tautomeric uh, tautomeric bases can lead to change in the uh, change in the uh, change in the information being carried by that particular molecule of dna after replication has occurred so we see that uh, in the parental dna the red marked bases are g and c g pairs with c during replication uh, c will pair with g that is the normal uh, condition but if there is rare enol tautomeric form of guanine then it will not pair with C, it will not incorporate C, in, instead it will incorporate thymine whereas C which is present in the normal, uh, normal tautomeric form it will incorporate against it a guanine uh, residue. After, the, uh, after this round of replication has occurred, in the second round of replication what will ha happen that in, uh, G will incorporate C but in place of uh, T there will, be, uh, there will be incorporated adenine. So this particular phenot uh, this particular uh, nucle uh, DNA molecule will be mutant and the cell getting that particular DNA molecule will be a mutant cell and all the progeny of that particular cell will be, will be having that particular mutant nucleotide sequence. Others will be wild type because all of them are having GAC residues at that particular location. So this is how tautomeric shift can lead to change in the change in the nucleotide sequence and this process is very spontaneous and naturally occurring at all times in the body of the organism. Now th there might be times that during replication template and primates might slip out of register and after slipping they will come uh, the, uh, the complex will come back to the uh, specific place and start, uh, start replicating from, uh, from a position where it was not present earlier. So this will lead to a frame shift mutation. And this is basically stimulated by repetitive sequences like uh, dinucleotides or trinucleotides in the template DNA. These sequences are very commonly found in DNA microsatellites and frame, sh frame shift mutation occurs very commonly in these particular DNA sequences because they have di or trinucleotide repeats. And stimulated by regions of complementarity in such sequences where there are tie or tie, trinucleotide repeats, there is formation of secondary structure in DNA which enhances the, uh, the slipping of the template and primer and this leads to enhanced rate of frame shift mutation. Now for example expansion of CGG and CAG repeats from one generation to next leads to diseases like 
muscular dystrophy, fragile egg syndrome and Huntington disease and this occurs because of replication slippage and this leads to frame shift mutagenesis. However, frame shift mutagenesis can be reduced by single strand binding proteins which prevent formation of secondary structure in nucleotide sequences which are having dinucleotides or trinucleotide repeats. Now this particular panel shows how a frame shift mutagenesis can uh, occur and what exactly are the causes. As can be seen here that there is a repeat of G nucleotides in, in, the, first, uh, in the first panel and after replication the uh, in the place of uh, against C G will be in, included but there might occur strand slippage because of these uh, repetitive, repetitive uh, element present, nucleotide sequences present and when this happens after repairing there might be an incorrect re repairing, repairing and uh, if the replication continues then an additional nucleotide has got incorporated in the DNA and this leads to a shift in the frame, uh, reading frame of the gene. And this particular is one, one uh, this particular panel shows that the uh, frame has shifted by one nucleotide because of inclusion of one G nucleotide in this particular manner. The FS represents the frame shift type of DNA whereas WT represents the wild type DNA. So the frame shift DNA is having a mutation in it because of shifting of the reading frame. Now apart from that DNA can be damaged in multiple of ways in the, in the, in the cell of the organism. And the damaged region of the DNA is known as DNA lesion. The lesion could be misinstructional, that is, it might alter the base pairing specificity of the uh, of the uh, of the DNA, and it might generate generate mutation in the next round of replication, or it might be non-instructional lesion, that is, DNA is unable to specify a complementary base, and it creates a replication block. If a non-instructional lesion occurs in the DNA, then it will lead to blocking of the replication so that DNA will not be replicated beyond that particular point and the cells will not be having replicated DNA. So it, it will lead to disastrous consequences for the progeny of the cell which is getting divided at that particular time. Now how are these lesions formed? The lesions which are caused because of damage, uh, DNA damage, how are they formed in the cells? The lesions could be spontaneous lesions which occur because of the intrinsic properties of DNA molecules or it could occur uh, by, by uh, because of byproducts of metabolism. The intrinsic properties of DNA molecule as already described uh, like tautomeric shift con, uh, can cause the uh, can cause the change in the DNA, uh, DNA sequence or there might be uh, free radicals present in the cell which occur because of metabolic metabolism occurring in the cell and these free radicals are the byproduct of metabolism and they might create spontaneous lesions in the cell or there might be replication and recombination errors in the cells and this causes lesions or damage to the DNA or there might be activity of mobile genetic elements or transposons from one place to another and this will lead to breakage in the DNA or damage in the DNA. Secondly, there might be induced lesions which occur because of presence of DNA damaging agents also known as mutagens. Also there might be illegitimate bases which might get incorporated in the DNA of the organism. These are the bases which have structure similar to uh, A, G, C and T but they are, they are not uh, recognized by the DNA polymerase and uh, if these bases are encountered either an incorrect base is uh, incorporated during replication or the replication is blocked. Now the illegitimate bases how they come into come to reside in the DNA of the organism these might uh, these might occur because of spontaneous deamination in the in the uh, in the uh, DNA of the organism uh, there might be spontaneous losing of the NH2 group from the bases and this might occur by physical or chemical agent the base might lose its NH2 group and uh, for example if cytosine loses its NH2 group there will be formation of uracil and uracil might get included in the DNA during replication though it is not a normal base for the DNA. Uh, for, the no, for the DNA thymine is the normal base but uh, if cytosine gets deaminated then uracil might 
get incorporated. And it is a good thing that uracil is not a normal base for the uh, DNA because if, uh, if uracil is occurring in the DNA, then the DNA repair mechanism will come and excise that uracil out. But if it was a normal base in the DNA and cytosine, any cytosine got deaminated into uracil, then DNA repair mechanism would not have recognized that particular uracil as an aberrant base and that mutation would have got fixed in the DNA and then the rate of uh, mutation would have been very high. But it is not the case because of absence of uracil in the DNA and there might be incorporation of base analogs during replication, uh, during replication which might cause illegitimate bases getting incorporated in the DNA and there might also be addition of bulky chemicals addict to the bases. So, these are some ways in which illegitimate bases can get incorporated in the DNA, namely spontaneous deamination, base damage, incorporation of uracil, incorporation of base analogs and addition of bulky chemicals uh, addicts to the bases. Now, this particular panel shows how deamination of bases can lead to changes in the uh, type of bases which are getting formed. Cytosine when gets deaminated, it leads to formation of uh, uracil. Adenine when it gets deaminated, it leads to formation of hypoxanthine. Guanine deamination leads to formation of xanthine, and 5 methyl cytosine leads to formation of thymine. Uh, cytosine, uh, cytosine exists uh, in, in most of the cases as 5 methyl cytosine, and whenever there is deletion of NH2 group from 5 methyl cytosine, thymine is formed. And this is recognized as normal by the cellular machinery because thymine is a normal base in DNA. So, wherever 5-methyl cytosine is present in large quantity, in whatever stretches 5-methyl cytosine is present in large amount, their tendency for formation of thymine is high and the rate of mutation are also very high. These are specific islands in the DNA of, of the organism. Another mechanism by which this particular illegitimate base can be formed is oxidation. Oxidation can lead to formation of bases which are having altered base pairing ability like formation of 8-oxoguanine wherein at position 8 there is addition of oxygen radical because of presence of specific oxygen radical formed by metabolism. And this particular 7-8-dihydro-8-oxoguanine uh, molecule, it can pair with C or it can pair with A. If it pairs with uh, cytosine, then it is a normal condition. But if it base pairs with adenine, then it leads to mutation because in the next replication round, adenine will base pair with T. So, one of the DNA molecule getting formed will be having GC combination whereas the another will be having A and T combination. So, oxidation because of presence of uh, certain uh, chemicals like nitrosoguanidine or nitrosoamine can lead to altered bases which can lead to altered base pairing specificity leading to mutation. So, this particular panel shows that if there is uh, oxidation of cytosine, it will lead to uh, formation of uracil and there will be change from CG to UG and ultimately it will lead to formation of TA in place of CG. Whereas, if adenine is uh, oxidized, then it will lead to formation of inosine which can base pair with, uh, which can base pair with cytosine. So, ultimately there will be change from AT to GC and guanine can form uh, the xanthine and this particular molecule can either base pair with C or it can base pair with T. If it base, base pair with C, then it is all right. But if it base pairs with T, then GC will be converted to AT base pairs. Also, addition of specific bulky products like uh, alkyl groups, methyl group or uh, ethyl group to the bases can alter the base pairing specificity of these bases. The, uh, these groups can also be added to the phosphate uh, backbone. But if uh, they are added to the, uh, to the bases, then it will uh, lead to specific changes in the base pairing ability. For example, this panel shows that guanine uh, normally base pairs with cytosine. But if uh, in the presence of N-methyl N-nitro, N-nitrosoguanidine, there is addition of methyl group in, in this particular base, then there is formation of O6-methyl guanine. And this O6-methyl guanine is having a base pairing uh, capability which base pairs with thymine. So, guanine instead of base pairing with cytosine, now it is base pairing with thymine. So, we have a change from GC to AT. This particular panel shows how ethyl methane sulfonate uh, causes addition of uh, methyl group, ethyl group to the, uh, to the uh, guanine molecule and changes its base pairing uh, ability from C to base pairing with thymine leading to GC to TA conversion. 
Now there are certain molecules which are similar in structure with bases, but when they are included in the DNA, they stop uh, replication or if they are present in DNA, they might cause incorporation of some other, some wrong bases uh, which are not following the Chargaff's rule. So adenine, uh, this particular panel shows that adenine nucleoside has this particular structure and there is 2 amino purine which is having similar structure as adenine and it might get incorporated in the DNA. Similarly, thymine has a uh, base analog 5-bromouracil which can get incorporated in the DNA, but 5-bromouracil can exist either in keto form or enol form. If uh, this particular molecule exists in keto form, then it will be having base pairing ability of uh, uh, pairing with adenine which is a normal case, but if it is present in enol form, then it will be base pairing with guanine which is an aberrant uh, condition leading to, form, uh, leading to mutation in the nucleotide sequence. Other agents known as intercalating agents are also present which are bulky planar molecules, polycyclic molecules which get included in the DNA and these particular bases when they get incorporated they stack between the bases and when it is uh, done in this particular manner then what happens is that in, in opposing to these particular bases either the replication machinery stops, there won't be put any bases opposing these particular intercalated bases or the wrong bases might get incorporated. These uh, bases frequently lead to breakage of DNA and the example are ethidium bromide which is a carcinogenic agent, proflavin and acridin orange. Also if the organism is exposed to, uh, to high energy radiation like ultraviolet rays, it might lead to formation of dimers like thymine dimers which are, uh, which are connected by, uh, to each other through 5 and 6 carbons or thymine and cyt uh, cytosine uh, dimer which are connected through 4 and 6 carbons. These dimers lead to blockage of replication. Whenever replication machinery arrives here, it will stop uh, at that particular point and no more bases will be added to the newly, uh, to the uh, strand which is getting constructed newly. Now, because of uh, this particular damage, there might be uh, creation of apurinic or apyrimidinic sites, that is the sites where there are no base purine or pyrimidine present and this could occur because of spontaneous base loss, because of hydrolysis or because of enzymatic removal of illegitimate bases. This particular panel shows that guanine has got replaced from this particular position and th this is a basically a, uh, an apurinic site and this is a basically a mutated region. Also, there might be a nick in the region of the DNA, uh, in, in the backbone of the stra strand of duplex and this might cause lo loss of some of the bases and this occurs because of physical or chemical damage or because of endonuclease activity of certain enzymes and there might be gaps wherein more, uh, more than one nucleotide residues are missing from one strand of the duplex and this occurs because of exonuclease activity or incomplete replication. There might be a double stranded break which is a serious condition, this is a lesion in both strands of the duplex and this occurs because of physical or chemical damage or because of elimination of AP sites and the NICs uh, because of NICs which are remaining uh, following repair synthesis. So these all damages are very serious damages. Another is cross link damage which occurs because of uh, covalently uh, joining, covalent joining of DNA strands and this uh, joining could be intra strand or inter strand joining which is induced by dimerization caused by UV rays or it could also be caused by chemicals. Now there are various repair mechanism which uh, function to repair these particular type of damages or mutation which are occurring in DNA like direct reversal, ligation of NIC, photo reactivation, repair of alkylated bases or mismatch repair, base excision repair and nucleotide excision repair and double strand break repair, translation DNA synthesis, these are discussed somewhere else. So these are the mechanisms which repair whatever mutation are occurring in the DNA. Now the mutation could be detected in the fungi with the help of uh, this, particular, uh, this particular methodology and uh, the wild type, wild type are exposed to X-rays and the mutagenic uh, conidia are then crossed with the wild type and the uh, spores which are formed with they are grown in the complete medium. The spore, uh, after that the spores are taken and they are grown in the minimal medium. If a spore is not able to grow in the minimal medium, then it is supplanted with the different types of nutrient and in which, whichever nutrient, uh, uh, in which, whichever nutrient it is supplied and it grows, then it tells that a, a specific mutation in that particular gene has occurred in the, in the, that particular organism. Now, uh, uh, 
a very famous exp uh, experiment was done on Drosophila uh, to, uh, to ascertain how the uh, X-rays can uh, cause mutation and this is known as CLB method. Herein, uh, C represents uh, an inversion which uh, re uh, represents crossover between the uh, chromosome. L represents a lethal allele which is recessive and B represents a dominant allele which leads to formation of bar I in the organism. So, CLB female which is heterozygous was mated with a male who was ir irradiated with the X-ray. And after this, uh, after this irradiation, the male was mated with this heterozygous female and there was formation of gamete and uh, the individuals which were formed, uh, the females were either normal or they were uh, having bar eyed in which condition they were heterozygous. The males uh, which were having the uh, chrom X chromosome having CLB, it dies because of presence of lethal uh, allele and the male which was normal, it survives because it does not have the lethal recessive allele. When such males uh, which are normal, which, uh, when they are mated with the uh, female which are bar eyed, they uh, we get progenies, we get uh, gametes which are having uh, X chromosome uh, with CLB or X chromosome which are having wild type allele, whereas the male will be having uh, X chromosome which is having wild type allele and Y chromosome which is not having the uh, uh, respective allele. So, whenever there is mating be, uh, in the generation 2 between the males which are normal and the females which are heterozygous for CLB. Uh, CLB, we get uh, individuals, uh, the progeny, uh, the females are either CLB that is they are having barred eyes, but they survive because they have a lethal recessive allele which is uh, recessive, but they have a wild type allele also and the bar eye uh, allele is dominant. So, the female is bar eye, whereas the normal females have both, uh, both the set of allele as uh, wild type and the male which is having CLB condition it dies because of lethal, uh, lethal recessive and a male, uh, another male which is having a normal chromosome, a normal X chromosome and Y chromosome, if it, uh, if it dies, it suggests that because of X-ray, X-ray the mutation has uh, occurred in the X chromosome of the organism. So, this is, tells us how X-rays can cause mutation in the genome of the organism. Thank you. Uh, thank you, sir. Thank you so very much. Uh, dear friends, if you want to give your feedback for this particular lecture, then you can mail us at info.cc at the rate nic .in. All the lectures uh, pertaining to the series genetics uh, are already there for you on uh, YouTube. So, you can watch the lectures and definitely give your feedback. We will be meeting again very soon. Till then, take care. Goodbye. Thank you, sir. Thank, thank you, sir. You.